Are you ready? It's time for What's Hot. We talk about stories that have all of us talking. We're joined today by Tracy Johnson with Temple Milwaukee, and Jeff Wagner is back. So there's a growing concern pilots are relying too much on computers to fly planes. Automation has made flying safer, but the FAA put out an alert urging pilots to focus on their manual flying skills. It comes in the wake of recent plane crashes. Are airline pilots relying too much on automation. I hope not. <laughs> well, no, and I think, first of all, you have to put it in perspective. Air travel is safer now than it has mm -hmm. ever been. I mean, I guess I look at this like when I sit down to balance my checkbook, I can do it longhand, but I use a calculator because it's generally speaking more accurate. To me, this is the same thing. You've got the technology, let the technology take over. Obviously, pilots should be concerned and not let their skills atrophy, but if, if technology works, use it. Well, and not to mention that flying is safer now than it was years ago. Flying is safer than almost any other mode of transportation when you put it into perspective. And when you think about it, you're, you're, they're not uh, demanding less of pilots in terms of training. Uh, and when you th there are so many airplanes in the air, I, I, just, I think this is unfounded. So I guess I don't really understand the message from the FAA then. I mean, are they, are they upping requirements? Are pilots not meeting the requirements of what they need to do on the simulator as far as practicing and getting their hours in? I mean... No, I think what they're saying is that they don't want pilots to get to a point where they rely so much on the technology that they forget how to fly the plane in case of an emergency, which I, I guess, you know, may, may makes sense in a way, but at the same time, while you don't want your skills to atrophy, you've got the technology that's there. We've got computers. You've got all this stuff. Use it. Well, and they're also saying that there's nothing that can replace the reaction time of a human being, and so it has to really be working together at all times. Yeah, but I'm guessing the FAA saw something there that they want just to make sure or just send the right message. I mean, it is interesting, and I don't know how much training they go through, but the, I'm under the understanding that pilots go through a lot of training, and it is done with computers and uh, and they're required to do X amount of flying per month so um, you obviously want them at the top of their game sure. <laughs> please yes, yes <laughs> absolutely we, that's something we can all agree on I think yeah, right I, there. Mean, I always get a little nervous you know when you're sitting there and then the pilot you know walks back you know and is not in <laughs> I hate the big drop where you do, you know, you're, you're hitting air pockets yeah. and you do the down and come back up. That the, makes me... The one thing I wish they did improve is when the pilot goes on and speaks to everybody in you the plane. Understand you still them. can't understand what the heck they're saying. I mean, so you think of all the... improve the intercom system? Right, at least improve that. I so mean, you like when they do a stand-up comedy on the airplane? We were just <laughs> flying a few weeks ago and he was cracking some pretty significant jokes and I'm thinking... Fly the plane. Yeah. <laughs> Fly the plane. Yeah. Fly yeah. the plane. As they're, they're put on the fasten seatbelt sign, and I'm thinking. <laughs> All right, we're going to leave it at that. Coming up. It's hot at our viewers' choice topic of the day. Again, we're joined by Tracy Johnson and Jeff Wagner. Milwaukee Public Schools moved away from traditional grades for elementary and K-8 students. A new program rates students instead. A student's grade will be based on their overall knowledge of the assignment. Should MPS eliminate letter grades for elementary school students? Boy, I, I'm a traditionalist, and so my initial reaction is, oh my God, that sounds like a lot more work. But when you really look at the different levels, we're talking about four different levels. Do they understand it or do they not understand it? And I think it's, it's going to require the teachers to engage a little bit more with the students, um, more than they're already doing. But I don't think there's going to be much of a change here. Yeah, Tracy, go with your initial instinct. Uh, this is, we're talking about what the, the, the report cards came out, and am, am I wrong, but isn't MPS, I mean, the one big school system that got a failing grade? And so now what we're going to do is we're going to stop giving kids letter grades, A, B, C, and D, in exchange for this kind of touchy feely sort of concept maybe with young kids maybe but they're going to run this all the way through eighth grade you're going to have a whole bunch of kids that are then going to go into high school where they're still getting the letter grades they're going to be completely unprepared they're not going to know how to deal with this and by the way you're not going to hold it against the kids when they don't turn in assignments and don't do their homework and show up late this is a recipe the, for the one disaster. thing that i'm unclear about as a parent is i guess if i get the letter grade, I kind of know where they stand. I can ask questions about what are they lacking, where do they need to improve, which I would hope would be listed anyway. But mm -hmm. um, how do you know with you know these four different standards, like where that puts you 
Well, I mean, on the spectrum. But you can look at the letter grades. I mean, it's almost a translation. I, I, I don't even know what the top grade is, but the top grade, let's say that's very good. Um, that would be your A. The second grade uh, would be meeting expectations. That, that would, would be, be a B. B. Okay. I mean, I, I think you're really looking at a very similar thing. And the so fact just explaining what A, B, C, D. I, I think for us traditionalists, but but let's look at it this way, well, Jeff. You said it right do there. It? But it's, why do it? If see, I don't think you're right, Tracy. Because I think we're this failing. Is, it's I failing. I think this is a C. So the answer is. We're, we're not, we got to change we're, it up. We're not. We're not going to measure the kids that are succeeding. We. I, see, what I think this is all about is they don't want kids to feel bad. They don't want some kids who aren't doing well to say, "Gee, I'm not a straight A student, or I don't have a 3.5 or whatever, so I can feel good about myself." I. No, see, I just don't think this is the way to go. I think you need more accountability. All right, less. third topic, guys. Time for our lightning round. A touching story. An eight-year-old boy. He's asking Santa to help his twin sister who is being bullied at school. Yeah, listen to this. Part of his letter reads, kids at school are still picking on Amber and it's not fair because she doesn't do anything to them and it makes me mad. I prayed that they would stop, but oh. God is busy and I need your help, Santa. This, that makes my heart hurt. It does, yeah. <laughs> well, and kids, we, we do not give kids enough credit. I mean, they have instincts, they have intuition, they know what's right and what's wrong, even they, though they don't know what's real and what's not um, in terms of Santa Claus. But I, I mean, I have a three-year-old at home and he knows when something's not right or when I raise my voice, he says, you know, mommy's angry. I mean, they know and we just don't give them enough credit. You know, and the really interesting thing about this story is that mom apparently knew the child had been having, the, the girl had been having some problems and stuff, but she hadn't come in and talked about how she'd been bullied. It was only because, you know, the, the twin brother alerts her. Now mom's on to it. She's called in school and they're going to do something. So maybe this is a case of Christmas coming a little bit early and that would be great. Yeah, hopefully Santa answers answers his wish. And Amber has a good brother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, and the tw it's the twin thing, too, I think. I think so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Probably a little bit of that. Well, the What's Hot discussion will continue online. Find that page at tmj4.com slash hot.